Okay, so we're going to take a look at the design process um, for our final, and I'm going to demonstrate quite a bit of it. Uh, first, let's just take a look at the assignment to review what it is that we're supposed to do. Um, we're using uh, la last week, I guess it was only two days ago, but last week's winner, um, which was Sophie's Magic Cat concept, which is right here, which she's got that design page, and then this quick write-up, play as Artemis the Magical Cat and travel across lands defeating monsters while upgrading your magic hat staff and cloak to give you different abilities and power-ups for your journey. So cool. A nice simple idea. Um, I did say that I was going to provide some examples down here. These are actually all mine. Um, I made all of these just because I had them lying around on my computer. I thought, okay, I'll let them be examples for this process. Uh, the left-hand strip here is an example of different graphic styles for the same idea. So we've got a pixel art version at the top, which is what I actually started with, and then different various illustration and painting styles that could be applied to the same thing. Did that a number of years back and thought it looked pretty nice, so I saved it like that. Uh, over on the right-hand side, these two actually go together. Um, a long while back, I was working on a zombie game and there was the potential that we were going to design everything, but it turned out that we actually didn't, and we were given designs. But while I thought that was a possibility, I came up with some generic zombie types and then costume reskins for different zones that potentially could be used. So I have one short squat zombie, one fairly normal male, fairly normal female, and then different costumes that they could wear on top of their zombie appearance to kind of reuse them level to level. And then down here, a few specific uh, design examples where they would be skinned to college or a Walmart or something. And I particularly like the big fat lady on a rascal, which I always thought was very amusing. So just a little example of how some of the concept design steps might go. Um, you can start out with pretty loose drawings, um, start to get design variations and tie those things down. And eventually you can make them full animated concepts. Um, we did have some of that stuff, but it didn't look anything like this because we had to change the style, so I just didn't include that. Okay, so first up, uh, I was just sketching a little bit earlier. You guys can ignore that for now. We should start thinking about what is it that we're looking to end up with. And there are a few kind of categories that you can consider um, when you're doing your concept. One thing we're gonna think about is style. Right, so is there a particular kind of graphic style that we're looking for? Is there inspiration that we can draw from that's going to help us significantly in coming up with this finished look for our uh, project? This can be something that you think about pretty far down the line if you want to, especially in game development, function matters first. So you want to make sure that controls and basic you know, scoring schemes or lives or whatever, all that's thought out and that you can actually play test in a fairly simplistic state to make sure your game is fun. Uh, but style is one of those first inspiring things that usually starts to make a, a concept feel like it's coming together. Even if you haven't developed any assets yet, having just a couple examples of style can be really powerful. Uh, we want to think about design. So that would be the designs of all of the uh, characters, locations, maybe props, that sort of thing. So we've got a magic cat and we probably want to think about exactly how is that cat going to look, what their body proportions are going to be like. Some of that would affect gameplay, but not necessarily. Um, for instance, if I have this short little chibi kind of cat, then having them climb a lot or do acrobatic things might be out of the question. Uh, but having them float would be cool. Having them um, have a very short jump height might be cool. Or they could be like a Mario character where they've got a, a huge amount of jump height for their tiny little frame and then it's just kind of a funny thing. So you want to think about this sort of stuff fairly early, but mm, it, it isn't necessarily something that's going to affect the way the game plays unless you want to sort of play that up. So style design and then also, um, because we're trying to make a promo sort of thing, layout. So layout in this case would just be, how are we going to de de depict the character and background a little bit of gameplay in a way that's really catchy, um, fun to look at, looks interesting, kind of gets people involved and interested. So I've got a big folder full of examples that I pulled from various uh, internet resources that we'll take a look at. And I'll point out where um, some of them might be more useful for certain parts and some might be more useful for other parts. So first, 
I've got this little title card or advertisement plaque for Night in the Woods because the cat character reminded me of the main character in Night in the Woods. So there's a couple of things that we could take away from this. One, there's a really strong graphical style um, being shown here where we've got this kind of speckly painted uh, sponge paint, maybe even watercolor paint in the lower uh, left-hand corner here on top of this very um, crisp, hard graphical cutout, paper cutout kind of look. Uh, we could completely lift that style ourselves and use it for our own purposes if we wanted to. Um, not necessary, but it would be a fun thing. Oh, it switched to, switched to like editing the thing for some reason. I think because I touched it with my tablet. Let me reopen just so it's not doing that. There we go. Um, Animal Crossing was another one that I thought was fairly similar to this kind of magic cat concept. So a lot of their animal characters you know, are, are cute, you know, stylistic, anime inspired maybe. That is a full three-dimensional game. So that would make this take a significant turn towards maybe three-dimensional models instead. But like I said, that's completely possible. There's no reason why we have to be married to the idea of a pixel art game. Like Sophie said, it's our job to kind of explore. Um, another one, a couple down here, which is exploring the 3D aspect. This is a remake of a Mickey Mouse game, uh, Castle of Illusion for Sega Genesis that I played when I was a kid. Let me go hop forward and find that. Yeah, so here's the, the title graphics for uh, Castle of Illusion, which I thought was fun because it was playing on the Sorcerer's Apprentice kind of history of Mickey Mouse and you were exploring a, a fun kind of magical location. Um, this one was a two-dimensional pixel-based game and the remake is three-dimensional with significant uh, graphical upgrades, but not really for gameplay. So just different ways that we could kind of approach and think about the, the concept. Then the Google Doodle that starred the little character, the little cat character where you're fighting ghosts, um, was another nice source for inspiration for me. I really loved the background details and uh, the sort of illustrated cartoon style of the doodle, where we've got kind of a pastel, maybe, I don't know, like chalk kind of uh, rough outlined uh, shapes and forms with fairly flat kind of uh, characters and objects, which could probably work really well with this idea um, if we let it. Um, some people did fan art of that sort of thing, so I grabbed a couple just because there were nice costume details and variations on a theme here that could be inspiring. Um, someone was cartooning the little character to be like a referee for some reason. I'm not sure if that was another Google Doodle that they did at some point, but I really liked it. So I just thought, why not? I'll just snag that one as well. A lot of great kind of expression in the character for this one. There's Sophie's original concept page. Um, some more elaborate ones. So I'm not sure what the concept is for in this case, but they're really great, fully cartoon, slick looking um, animals and aquatic creatures. And we could try something like that. This would require a significant um, kind of pre-planning and design to get these just right. But this harkens to like Pixar and you know Disney movies and Sony movies and stuff like that. So probably this was for something more cinematic, but it has a really interesting graphical style, which could be used for a platforming game. There's no reason why not. There's one of the graphics for the Google Doodle when you uh, win and it shows your uh, score. So this is an example of a kind of layout, a nice layout scene where we've got the characters kind of flying together with the ghosts and our main character, you know, front and center. We probably put title graphics up here somewhere, kind of casting a spell while flying on a broomstick. Um, nice kind of attractive character where you want to know more about them, even though gameplay is not necessarily being showcased here. This is another illustrative style that I thought was pretty interesting. Um, Reminiscent of like Hellboy comics, Mike Mignola, also reminiscent of like Darkest Dungeon. If we wanted to take the art style in a significantly darker direction while still maintaining some of the fun and cartooniness, this would be an interesting way to go, where essentially it's a, a line illustration with certain darked out features, usually in the background. Um, they're going a little bit light on the kind of black and white uh, noir comics kind of treatment, but you could play that up if you really wanted to. So if this was going to be a cartoony, you know, sort of heroic 
dark game, then this would be a direction that could go in. I just thought these uh, cartoon illustrations were hilarious and they also have a really nice um, kind of style applied to them, but very exaggerated, silly, maybe even ugly and grotesque looking frogs and ducks with a nice attractive kind of um, gradient color to their bodies. I think these would lend themselves fantastically to simply animated sprite figures in a game. But again, I don't know why they created these. I just thought they were great. Um, here's just uh, one of the cat characters from Animal Crossing. I don't know which generation is which, but it looks like the right hand one is maybe one of the earliest ones and the left hand one is maybe a later one. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because there's basic proportions and sort of body features. Also, even between these two games, um, you can see a significant difference in the character's bodily proportions. In the left, he's got a lot more torso and his legs and arms are a bit longer. On the right, his head is much larger in relation to his body, body very short, and then stubby arms and legs. So it would be difficult to get him to do something like, say, put on a hat uh, on the right hand side. Here's another great illustrated style. Um, flat kind of uh, maybe, I don't know, gouache painted or uh, acrylic painted kind of storybook look to it. Um, something that might be interesting. Uh, here's Sanrio uh, characters, which is the Hello Kitty franchise. And they've got a lot of cute little chibi characters. They go really extreme with the, the chibi aspect in that this uh, frog down here, uh, Karopi, has like no legs or arms. It just has flippers on like a rectangle. So that's pretty extreme. And I'm not sure if I would ever go that far for a character that needed to do things in a game, but it is cute. And they've got a kitty cat character up here that has nice head and body proportions that I might use as a jumping off point when designing. Um, just another example of a concept illustrative style. Again, I'm not quite sure what this is for. This seems to be like some sort of maybe mobile game concept, but it's in the fantasy genre and it's cartoony and you know, kind of has all those elements uh, present. It's also a really good example of character showcase layouts, where each one of these six characters has a fairly distinct emotion and fairly distinct kind of details to show who they are. Uh, upper left character, we've got someone who's really upset about these broken vials, so maybe that's his job. Might be some sort of alchemist or something, a more intellectual character. Um, lower left, this wizard, you know, loving his books and walking away, kind of confusing this guy. We've got angry guy in jail. Um, this guy appears to be taking a quest. Um, she's getting some sort of pizza gold artifact, and she's commanding some ships to fire cannons and stuff. But really good example of kind of the layout, the way to showcase the character, to get the emotion in a very, very simple way. So something like this would be fantastic if you ended up with that, or something with a little bit more gameplay would be fine too. Here's a gameplay shot of Night in the Woods. It's almost a little hard to tell that it's gameplay because the graphic design was so simple, but this is definitely just a screenshot from in the middle of the game. Um, here's a illustration concept someone did of sort of a side-scrolling, slightly more elaborate um, kind of magic-based game. You can kind of imagine that we could have the two-dimensional plane here being the play space and the background just parallaxing and animating way off back there to give um, extra decoration. This is a pretty ornate kind of layout, but it does showcase a little bit of action, a little bit of character, a little bit of world building. So I thought it was a good example. Um, here's another two-dimensional example, similar to, um, what was that? What is this game? What do I keep calling it? Night in the Woods. Um, similar to Night in the Woods, but with a lot more sort of illustrative graphic stuff going on. I like the, the choppiness of these textures and shadows. I think they're really appealing. Um, sort of makes it feel like it was made out of crayon or something like that. And then these characters have details that are made of nothing but line, which I think is charming as well. Though I don't know how it would work practically in a game situation. Uh, one more from that same illustrator with a little bit less of the out there cartooniness and a bit more practicality with their characters. But again, I think that this illustration style fits the concept fairly closely. And if you swap this out for magical stuff, I think it would make a lot of sense. And I actually think this is that same, yeah, this is that same artist once more doing an actual gameplay uh, kind of screen where we've got score in the form of 
you know, money down in the lower left. What appears to be a prompt for like a quest to talk to this person. A little bit like if Animal Crossing was a 2D side-scrolling game. Okay. So all of those concepts I got from just kind of Googling different uh, terms, remembering things that I had seen at one point um, and were interested in and thought were attractive, um, sort of exploring different terms and where they led to. When you get um, Google image results, sometimes they lead down a rabbit hole that you should pursue for a little while and just grab things and just drag them into a folder. Um, get a whole bunch of them for inspiration because you never know what's going to inspire you and get you thinking along a certain line. Um, I wouldn't recommend just directly copying anything, but style is one of those things that's not really like copyrightable and it's not something you're ever going to very much get in trouble for. You can basically copy the style of anything. As long as you're not copying the content, you're fine. Um, copying the content is where people get in trouble. So just don't do that. Okay. Uh, any questions about the references and things that I brought up before I get started uh, sketching and doodling? You guys good? Yeah. You guys sure? No questions whatsoever? Good so far. Been yeah. so quiet, you guys. <laughs> All right. So let's start messing around then. Um, I did start a little bit earlier just to kind of pass the time while we were waiting for class to start. But the first thing I would probably want to think about is who is the character and how do I want to draw that character so that I can appropriately pose them and make them seem heroic for the purposes of the game. Um, something I like to do is play around with basic shapes first. So I've got like oval shapes with larger eyes, um, completely closed like cat eyes, different shaped ears, different body proportions, that sort of thing. And so you can do quite a lot with this. Like I could have, for instance, a cat head, which is just like a taco like that. And then I could stick up like really tall, thin triangular ears like this. Um, I could give them big round eyes and like a little, little tiny nose like that. But this is going to give me a certain kind of look. It's like a South Park look with that one. They look uh, a little bit scared, a little bit confused, not particularly friendly. So maybe I could play with variants of that if I copy this. I'll just bring this down here. And then rather than keep all of those features, let's change some of them. So for one, the eyes seemed way too South Park to me. So let's play around with more like almond-shaped eyes. I'll go with um, bigger because bigger tends to be like more baby, more like um, cute kind of stuff. So we'll go like that, which already looks more feline, I think. And we'll give a really big pupil and iris to kind of push that cuteness a bit. Okay, this character looks pretty intense because they're kind of focused directly on us. Uh, the ears I feel like are adding to a bit of like evil feeling or aggressive feeling or something. So let's take those out and figure what else could we do? Could we do this? I think that's too much like a different animal, right? So probably not. Could we just extend the sides up? Maybe if I do something like that, this feels like a fox now. Does that feel like a fox to you guys? You guys still here? It does look like a fox. Yeah, a little bit. As opposed to a cat. So let's try something else. Um, how I about... the head shape. The head shape? See, I think the head shape like this looks like a cat. But then he would have virtually no ears. Right? So maybe I could extend the head up like this a bit to kind of get that shape. So what about that with the two-tiered sort of thing where I've got the head and then the ears? I can also try it without and just like get rid of that line entirely or even put just one line here which is rounder. Kind of interesting. I would call that like a maybe, but not a definitely. Like I'm feeling okay about it, but not super fantastic about it. So yeah, let's play with a different head shape then. So we've tried this like taco or half moon kind of thing. Um, let's play with a round one then. So here's a nice round circle. If I were to do 
basically what I think of as a cat is having two triangular shapes coming off the top, kind of like that. Then I've got to play with proportions. So let's do a bigger nose. Look kind of goofy, huh? Do something like that. It's losing its cuteness because this big nose is definitely not cute, right? And it kind of doesn't matter what I do. If those are the proportions I use, we're not going to get this cutesy kind of, you know, anime inspired look like we had before. So maybe I can, I could copy that. Let's copy it just to see the difference. Um, I'm going to just grab some features and scale them and move them. So I'll take the muzzle and shrink it. That's cuter. So down here, it looks weird, like a big nose area. Up here, where we've got more chin, that immediately feels cuter to me. Uh, let's do that. And I'll take the, well, let's take one eye at a time so that I can scale them independently. Let's make them bigger. Two different size eyes would give a sense of like derangement and craziness, but we could expand both of them. So now we can compare side by side where I think definitely the one on the left has more appeal to it, even though it's kind of a simplistic difference. I already feel like that one is, is winning out in this competition with this round head. Let's try something else with the ears. Let's make them really small. So now it's like literally a baby, which maybe is too much, right? Don't want to quite go that far. So just glancing at the other ones that I had up here, just to kind of see the difference. What if I went really big? That's cute. It's like a bat, yeah, it's, it's cute, but you know, probably going too far with that. Um, we could also try different things like, let's see, I could go angular with these ones. Actually, I could like, let's put them right on top of the head up here. But remember, we're gonna have wizard hat probably and so putting them right on top of that, the head like that is probably not going to be a good idea eventually because we're going to have to put on maybe like a witch's hat or a wizard's hat or one of those little, um, you know, kind of sock hats or something like that. Unless we have little areas to go through, like on the sides, little holes in the hat or something like that. Okay. Also, I haven't really played with like roughing up the fur at all or making the shape more complicated. So far, I've just been using pretty simple shapes to play around with. But you can see, like, you can do quite a lot of exploration just with that without really doing very much else. I do want to try another basic shape. So instead of um, the two things that I tried were really severe, I'm going to try more of like a, a loaf of bread sort of thing or like a gumdrop where it's flatter on the bottom, rounder around the top because I think that'll give a sensation of like cheeks. There, something like that. Bigger eyes were definitely a winner, but how big is the question? So I think like we could give a muzzle also, another thing. Didn't really try before, but we'll do that. And so I could give like a full on muzzle. That looks like a dog already, doesn't it? Like I haven't even. Of Jake from Adventure Time. Yeah, I haven't even filled in any details, and it looks like a dog. So maybe no. Kind of a strange thing that happened there. Let me try. Um, I'm going to keep the eyes fairly low on the head, like here. We'll keep the nose small because that seems to be working each time. Um, I feel like a cat. Give him a little dimension on his squinty eyes. We can also give like eyebrows. I haven't really played with those at all. Like that. Hmm. Could do something like that. Grouchy cat now. Yeah, I'm putting his ears back because I wanted him to seem even grouchy too. That would be interesting. A personality trait. He could be really grouchy if we wanted him to. Um, we could also put like the ears down. 
That looks cute. Like maybe something just bonked off of their head. Bonk. I don't know what bonked off their head, but it does look kind of cute. Um, so far, that's my favorite of these ones that I've played around with. So at least we're, we're getting somewhere. We can also stylistically play around with like, do we want whiskers? Do we want a lot of whiskers, a few whiskers? Do we want to do something stylistic? Like have the whiskers be like lines on the face like this that are sort of like painted on or sticking out like that three dimensionally. And of course, like if it were a pixel art game, we'd never see that. But if it was an illustrated game, maybe we'd have a chance to. Um, I'm thinking something like short little whiskers nearby the mouth is probably what I would go with uh, because then I could use them for expression whenever the character wanted to emote or something. I could also play around a little bit farther with like adding cheeks and chin to the thing or shaving this part off to where now we've got kind of more of a bulb head instead. And that's, that's not bad. I think I prefer the, the bread kind of shape or even extending this a little bit lower, something like that. See, that makes me feel like this needs a hat now because there's too much cranium. So we'd actually need to start putting a hat on, but it would work with a hat. So lots of different variants that we can explore. If you want to show your various, you know, different attempts next week in your work, feel free. Um, give us something to choose from. But you should probably try to arrive at a favorite. You should try to get one that you think is the best representation of your idea so that you can present it to us. Okay. So we'll stay. Um, probably I'd give him like maybe a, a few little hairs on top of his head or something um, and choose this one for my favorite of this little set. Uh, let's go for body proportions then as well. Um, if you want to, you could make it a much larger character. So let's do like kind of two body with a head on top with longer limbs. I like this and feet. So this would be like a full adult character kind of proportions is one way that we could go or really, really short and compact like this one over here. Um, we could play around with having like an actual cat, you know, with like paws and stuff, but I don't think that's probably a good idea. It just seems weird to me to like, how are you gonna make it use magical objects and stuff like that? But it could be really funny for a certain kind of take. Oh, I don't know why his back legs were that big. There we go. Like, mm. I don't know. I don't think I would actually do that. Okay. So playing with body proportions is probably a good idea too, uh, especially trying to pose them doing something like casting a spell. You'll figure out if your body design is a little bit too extreme if you can't pose them um, doing things appropriately. So let me pop through the reference that I've got. For instance, like this was a really good example of body posing with a very, very simple concept. But you can see how the hands grow and shrink sometimes, the arms get much longer or much shorter depending on the pose. And that's all a part of the cartooning style. Or if you went with very, very simple limbs like these little sausage limbs, that's another thing. So our arms in our character could be arm plus knob for the hand like that, or they could be like Powerpuff Girl-esque nubbins like this. And both of those are fine. Let's see, there we go. Actually, I think even shorter like that. Certainly easy to animate and pose, you know, nubs. Just don't ask any questions about like how they're typing or anything like that. Okay, so either one of these would be good choices, but you wanna think about it and sort of decide on one. Your feet could be same thing, like little doll nubs like that, or you could have small feet on the ends of them. Uh, you could have toenails going straight down like that, right? Lots of different things that we could do. You could actually have, you know, like bean toes like cats actually do like this. 
along with maybe, uh, let's give them like a flat, like elephant kind of foot, and like this. So now I've got rounded bean toes and like a flat elephant foot. So this could be the foot potentially. Do cats have a dew claw? Or is that just dogs? That looks weird. I want to say they do. Do they? That looks bizarre. I don't know if this is an arm or a leg now, the thing that I've drawn. Looks like a little tiny thumb. <laughs> okay. So hopefully that gives you some idea of like the design work that we're talking about. Let's just think about if this is a platforming game, what are some really common game mechanics that you have in a platforming game? A lot of jumping. A lot of jumping. Yeah. So you're going to need like platforms. Um, what else? A lot of walking back and forth. Sure. What about things in the environment that you might interact with? Spikes. Spikes or, or killing things, right? Typically spikes, right? You fall on this and it kills you. But do you want your main cat character to be impaled on the screen? Do yes. you do? Okay, he does. So I mean, for a cat, like water could be something that's like the equivalent of that, which you don't want to fall in, you lose a life when you hit it, but it's really you just got wet, right? So you could have like little um, little shore banks and grass and little pools of water that you have to jump over as that kind of spike pit mechanic instead of like impaling them, right? And in Mario, it was just like fall off the screen. So it can be really simple. Um, what about pickups? like coins or potions or, I don't know, magic artifacts. What do you think? But Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. I actually like the idea of like a magic butterfly. So like you've got these like almost made out of like shiny light or something like that with like sparkles. Be really, really super cute. So maybe it's like glowing. Magic yarn, yeah. So we've got a ball of yarn. And I don't know, I'm just going to sketch it like that. And then maybe like a string or two, you know, kind of hanging down there. And it could float in midair. <laughs> you could put it in like a shaft of light or something if you wanted to. But I think I just have it like um, sort of shedding like sparkles while floating up and down. And that could be like a good kind of like special pickup. If you're going to have a bunch of these, then probably don't do as much of this to them. But if you're only going to have one, then that would probably be a good way to go. Other concepts? What do you guys think for pickups for a magic cat? Milk. Milk in a in a jug or. Like a picture of a cow in there. I drew a monkey for some reason. Like that? Like Is that what your idea was? I was kind of go, um, maybe with the lab same thing with the label, but make it a potion bottle instead. So it looks like uh round with the like that kind of bottle? Yeah. yeah and then just, have the just have it be milk. Okay. Put like a better label on there. Let's see. With like, I got to think about how how do I draw a cow? Like this. There we go. That's more of a cow. Maybe put a little cork in there or something. <laughs> I don't know how you communicate that that's milk in there besides just paint it white. But yeah. Okay. So presumably, you know, platforming games are going to have things like lives or temporary power-ups the way Mario Brothers does or coins or rings the way Sonic and Mario both do or something like that. So we may want to think about what are those objects, right, that are going to be significant in this world that the cat's going to want to collect, you know, and eventually maybe there's something that fills up. I could imagine like a yarn ball in the top of the screen or something that starts as just like a little pile of little spaghetti 
and then gets bigger and bigger, you know, and then eventually becomes like a half formed yarn ball and then a fully formed yarn ball and like you get a one up or something once you fill the thing. So the thing you would be picking up is just sort of like pieces of string all throughout the level, which doesn't look very good until you process it through this like building mechanic to get like an extra life, which would be kind of an interesting take on that. Okay. So that's a little bit like of the design of the world. Um, you also want to think about location. Where do you want this to be set? Where should this magic cat be adventuring? Do you want them inside, outside, in a, another dimension, or inside of a wizarding school or castle, like how this is going? Out in the forest, like an enchanted forest? Could be hostile, could be normal. She's drawn a castle here, but also in the write-up said, adventuring throughout the world dark dank dungeon like this or something a little bit more whimsical personally i imagine like an enchanted forest kind of thing mm -hmm. i like the idea of the cat doing something like a rugrat situation where <laughs> the cat is imagining that it has magic powers and like a cardboard box is the castle oh that's interesting so you could, I guess you could do something like this where most of the background is like a forest, but then something like this could be a big like stone vacuum cleaner or like a, a big uh, monolith, but it's like a sofa or something like that to give hints that it's like half, half imagined world, half real world. So at that point, we're getting a little bit into like layout, a little bit into like environment design. But if I... And usually for layout, I try to give myself like a picture frame to think about first and then sketch in like, let's say we've got a little forest kind of pathway here, make it a little bit easier to deal with. And then probably gonna have like trees nearby like that in the near background, uh, maybe things in the foreground a little bit like that, but then maybe a like stone like a stone couch or something or let's let's make it like a stone stone easy chair to kind of give the idea that we are still in a living room in a house somewhere so we'll do like this And I would probably have to spend a little bit of time drawing it to make it look like stone and moss and you know stuff like that. But we could probably figure out how to how to make that happen. Maybe put cracks in it, little parts missing, you know, things like that. So that kind of your idea, that Rugrats kind of esque kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really cool. Yeah, and that's a that's a neat concept. So we could get like an enchanted forest sort of thing combined with like these hints, like maybe the, the tree has like an electrical socket shaped, you know, wood grain or something like that. So we're hinting all the time that we're like in both of those worlds. So then we've got the character who's like progressing through the story in the foreground here, in this area. And maybe we've got, I don't know, some sort of score health mechanic, you know, visible up here. Like that. Okay. Kind of a, a way to puzzle out the layout. And I'm kind of using this as inspiration for it. But remember, I'm not really copying anything from it. I'm just kind of using layout. So completely fine. We could also use this one for potential inspiration. So yeah, it's it's kind of just doing that and playing around with it, having some fun, thinking about what you like, what you don't like, um, and save as much of it as you want to show us because your thought process is valuable. There may be some parts of it that we like that you went a different direction with, and we want to go back and kind of pick the other one. So by leaving all these sketches out here, um, you might want to label them so that we know what the sketch is because like, this up here, I have no idea what that is unless I just say water, you know, to kind of help out. 
um, the milk jars kind of make sense. This one at the bottom doesn't really make any sense without like an explanation, right? But since you guys were here watching me draw it, you understand more of it. Just, you know, be nice uh, and label things that you think might need that. Do you guys have any questions about how this process is supposed to shake out then? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So for the style for the characters, do you want the poses, the designs to be like, um, um, Do you want the layout and the design and the environment? Um, was that the whole question? I didn't understand the question. So for the style, the design on the character. Yeah. Uh, like related to your example, do you want the, the face, facial expressions, the different uh, props like the hats? Um, so, what we're aiming for is like a with style like uh things things that can kill the character like water um, all of this is kind of optional what we're aiming for is a single showcase picture that we can do in the final week so something like this last little rectangular thing that i did over here only rendered really well so thinking about these is just a way to inspire what you might put in your layout but your layout could feature just your characters and a little bit of action, or it could have a full background. Um, probably it needs to have some background. All right, so. Do I need to do all three? Or do you want to just like pick one that matches, like pick, pick my favorite? I, I want you to pick. I want you to pick your favorite thing to present to us, but. I'm okay seeing as much of the the sketch work as you're comfortable showing, but you should have one that is clearly your favorite that you have singled out to show us, such as this rectangle, if I did a really good job on it, I'd probably put it in a separate document. The reason I make these categories is because these are different kinds of um, areas that your thought process might need to touch on to make a, a good image. You may need to think about the graphic style, as in um, how hard or soft are your shapes? Um, how flat are your shapes? How three-dimensional are your shapes? That all goes into style. What kinds of colors? Bright ones, dark ones? Um, the design is literally what I'm doing over here in these drawings, which is playing with different shapes and sizes and proportions to figure out what exactly I want the character to look like, both in face and body. And then finally, layout is just how do you compose this image down here? So I'm not going to assign points to each of these three categories. I'm just talking about them in categories to help you to kind of wrap your head around this task of designing a little splash screen image. So, uh, do you want us to include color as well? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's let's explore the character a little bit more since that's going to be the one I can take the farthest in this kind of demo. Um, I'm just going to grab this head because I think it's got a good potential to it. And I'll make a new layer and paste it. And now I want to play with like some body proportions and details. Um, I think I'll just copy the head a couple of times so that I can like draw costumes and bodies and hats and stuff on them. Yeah, we'll do that. And so I could play around with a, let's see, what could I do? I could do a, for sure I can do the little, the little dress like body that we've been seeing, but I may want to have no feet visible at all. So I could have the, the bottom of this cloak kind of like folding and billowing down here and then kind of lead up into the actual body like that. Um, I could even put like a little cloak. Like let's, yeah, let's put like a little hood on the character and see how that looks. Like this. And so now I've got a 
get rid of some parts. Um, I could probably just get rid of the ears. No, that's weird to get rid of the ears. So I got I got to think of something. So I could I could have like a little hole cut like that to kind of explain where where we're able to still see the the ears, right? But have them like sticking out of like a cloak like this. In this one, I've got no arms at all. And I could leave it like that. I could give him like maybe a medallion or something to close the cloak on top, some sort of magic, you know, thing. Um, arms can sometimes like appear and disappear by need. So one of those kind of like cartoon tropes is that a character can have no arms. And then suddenly when they need them, they could have arms. So I've almost sidestepped the, the need to, to figure out body proportions by just having this costume decide body proportions. So that's like one way. Uh, oh, I never made a tail. Let's make a little tail. Let's see, I'll make a, a fairly short little stubby tail like that. So let's try a different one then. Uh, instead of that, let's do a little, little round pear-shaped body, kind of like Animal Crossing. So we'll do this one. And hmm, for this one, I'm going to give him little nubbin legs. Very, very short squat. Little legs like this. And maybe let's, let's make him like um, shrugging shoulders with like little clenched fists. Like he's got water poured on him or something. So he's got more more personality that way. And then yeah, let's zoom in down here and like little, little curled tail. I like this. Okay. So I could figure out if I like that. So this one has no costume yet but has body proportions that I'm playing around with. Um, we could try something even more extreme, like the body could be that big. And yeah, I mean, potentially. Let's have, what should I do for this one? I could have him riding like a broomstick on this one. So for that, I'd probably do really short little legs. Like this. Um, and so then the reason they're like closing their eyes because they're like afraid or something. So there's a little bit of like playing around with body proportions. We actually got the, the largest character here. I didn't realize if we were to imagine underneath that, they've got to have some body kind of like this underneath there, similar to number two, but it's like even taller. Um, so we could play around with that. Any favorites? I like the one on the broom. The broom? It's super cute. Yeah. Let me see, we got a couple questions. Oh no, we got just one question. Should our drawing be more refined or similar to last assignment? This one should be more refined, but it doesn't have to be final. So make sure that you clean up what you draw, make it clear what you intend, but it does not have to be like full colored illustration like this necessarily. In fact, I'm gonna show by experimenting with colors with that one on the broom, what I would probably do. So we'll, we'll use this broom one. Grab that, I'm gonna copy it. I'll make a new layer again so that I can blow it up and draw with a little bit more precision and also mess around with colors. So we'll just make them that big. Okay, I'm actually gonna turn down the opacity and then maybe draw over the top of it to kind of finalize it. Okay, so 
what would I do for these hands? I think I like the idea of having just kind of nubbin Powerpuff Girl hands, maybe with little paw marks like that. Yeah, I think that's pretty cute. Um, I'd probably want the, the body to actually bend, be bending the other way if they're hunching over into the wind. So more like that direction. And then probably that means I should move the head. Let's just grab it. Like move it this direction forward. Yep, we'll put it there. And maybe move the facial features to the front a little bit. So move them this way. Probably just shrink these. So it's kind of like they're facing forward. Let's take these also. Do something like that. This one up, oh, I don't want to grab the side of his head by mistake. Right there. Yeah, so his face is kind of going into the wind. So we'll do, oh, I'm still in the back layer. So we'll do a slightly more refined, you know, drawing, not really very much, just kind of deciding and finalizing these shapes that I like the most and then use that to, to sort of apply a few colors, get just a basic kind of color scheme going. Uh, let's see more about his body. Could have little pads visible on that side. I think that's cute, but maybe a little bit distracting. Ah, no thumb, we don't want that. And then for the legs, same thing. There we go, just a little bit. Even shorter. So kind of just making it look nicer. Two, yeah, that's too far down. Like there. Actually, for like a scared, like if they were scared, that'd be like straight out when it, like this, maybe like bottle brush or something. If they were frightened. And then might even like invert the, like they really don't like flying on the broomstick or something. Um, yeah, let's think about that for a sec. So I could have this tail, I mean like straight out, like that. Kind of takes away from the cuteness a little bit though. You could wrap it around. That's probably too much. All right, I'll just stick with a, a simpler kind of flowing tail like I had. Like this. Yeah, just round that out a bit. Let's get rid of these parts that are going into the head. Um, I also don't have any costume at all on the character yet. You know what it just occurred to me? That would be like that. Mm, let's simplify that a bit. There, there, yeah, that's better. Um, I don't have any costume on the character yet. Does it seem like he needs a costume like a hat, a cloak, a robe, a necklace? Some sort of collar. Collar. Or a cape. A cape. A cape makes sense for flapping in the wind. Uh, let's let's try a cape then. I'll do it on another layer just in case I don't like it. Um, I'm going to continue turning this one down until it's gone entirely. 
But yeah, let's try let's try a cape. Let's see. Um, I could give it like big old you know Doctor Strange <laughs> kind of collar or something. But let's see if we did something here, and then what? Like that maybe. Do that sort of thing so we can see it like sort of flapping behind them. Yeah, just to get a nice something to play. With. Actually, I actually I like that. I think that'll work. Okay. So then shave this down just a little bit. Um, probably want to make sure it's being cut off by the head so it's behind that. Uh, yeah. I'm going to merge those. Get rid of that little bit there. Like this. Okay. And then I actually think back on this layer, everything to do with the face is fine. So I'm just going to turn that. 100% opacity and just get rid of the uh, the rest of it. Everything except for the face. Just to speed this up a little. You know what, I actually like that too. Okay, let me merge that. I like it with just that one ear because now it's got a stronger direction. I guess then I'd, I'd probably want this, the hair to be flowing backward. Like that, yeah. I just thought he needed something like hair up there. I could try the other ear, but I think it's probably better with just one. Okay. So we'll just say that's that's pretty good. Oh, I don't have the back of the broom. There we go. And I sort of forget what I was doing there, but uh, something like just like a, a wrap and a big bushy back of the broom like this. We'll do just like spikes for now. Want to think about the the design a little bit. Don't want ever, anything to look too preliminary. Clean it up a little bit. Yeah. What's going on with that billow in that cape that I drew? It looks a little bit weird, but eh, it's fine. We, we got to move on. So we'll say that this is like our, our illustration of our character that we're going to use. Let's play with uh, character colors then. So I'll, again, duplicate this a couple of times. Always good for variations to do little duplicates. I think I can make the, let's make it a little bit smaller so I can like put them in, in little squares. I want to have a background color also. We'll do four. Okay, so now underneath this, I'll choose a larger, let's say, a marker so I can fill in some colors to experiment. Let's start with uh, what we were looking at, and a lot of those was like a darkish purple or green. I'll do something kind of muddy and desaturated and just fill in this whole block and then color individually little parts. Swap to an eraser. This. Make 
make sure we cover up the whole character. Okay, so I can do that for a couple of them. And then maybe for these ones, I'll choose a different color. Like let's make a sky blue for one of these. And that doesn't really work very well against the gray. Just a little bit darker. And then, I don't know, for this one, something else entirely. About like dark, dark green. Just to have a little something interesting. Okay. So I'm, I don't even really need to make different layers for this because I'm just experimenting with color. Of course, at the, at the moment that you guys are gonna actually color your line work and be careful, use multiple layers, lock the transparency, et cetera, et cetera. But for this, I'm just kind of experimenting. So what color should a cat be? Should we try to make a black cat or go for something else? What do you guys think? Maybe the gray because of um, what's based on selfies. I don't know. What's hers gray? Let me take a look again. Oh yeah, okay, so she had like a gray, almost Siamese with two different colored eyes and purple and blue kind of details. All right, might as well start there. So I'm just gonna fill in, all right, the cat. Not being particularly careful because this is kind of a color comp, so like, I'm just filling it in to get an idea of what it would feel like. Uh, let's do let's do exactly what she did then. We'll go for the blue. So we had kind of a saturated blue for this cloak, like that. Um, broom, I think, should just be you know like brown and straw. Just kind of a broom. So that's not really standing out very well. And then could just pop that in there. Or try something entirely different. Like how about can make it like a red gem or something. And the blue and the red don't really work that well. Um, too similar. That kind of worked, but it's a bit boring. I'm thinking something like the, the color I put for the, the broom or like a gold or something would probably work best. And um, we also want to think about like the nose. I could do darkish. Like that, or I could do something like pink or purple. Oh, that's way better. Definitely want that. Okay. Um, we could also mess around with like giving the character like blushy cheeks or something. <laughs> kind of cute. All right. So we'll just say that's that's fine for that concept. Let's try another one. Um, let's try making a darker colored cat. In fact, let's use this one to try to make a darker cat because the background's so much lighter. I'm going to go very, very dark, um, sort of purplish blue. But I'm going to give it a bit of saturation. We'll go right here. There we go. So this one, if it was line work like that, it would be very hard to see the line work. So I might have to... I don't know, lock the transparency, fill the line work in with white or something like that, or just do something else to make those features come back. Uh, we can just fill in these, see what it feels like. I don't see any reason why I should change the colors of the broom. Let's just try that. And erase out all that purple. There. There we go. 
Oh, maybe not erase out the purple, but paint in the sky blue. Does that still work? I think that does still work. And again, not really needing to be very careful because we're just kind of experimenting with colors. Of course, you could set this up really nice and careful so that you could easily swap out colors instantaneously. You know, do it the smart way. That'd be fine, but just another way that we could do this. So with that dark cat, I feel like a brighter maybe redder kind of cape. Let's go for something like this, like a hot pink. Would now kind of be called for. Something like that. I like the pink. Mm, don't really know what to do with the gem or medallion. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Okay. And then for the nose, I'm thinking that kind of like this purple for, that I have for the background. It's pretty subtle. Can I mix these colors a little bit? Oh, there we go. Just get a little bit more of that. I have a, a marker tool on right now, so it doesn't mix very well, but just a little bit like that. Eh, something like that. And I could lock the transparency. Let's choose, um, let's just choose white to kind of get that. Well, it kind of works for the whiskers, but I don't think it works for the eyes. Not really. down to a, oh, what did I do? Oh, I think I've got, yeah, I had a racer on still. Interesting, not really working, but interesting. So a really dark cat color right now would be kind of troublesome because I don't know what to do. Although I can have two tones of uh, fur. So I'm gonna take that other gray up there and let's fill in like a muzzle. Yeah, I'm feeling like a muzzle area. Oh, I went too far. And maybe like an underbelly. Kind of like that. Oh, for some reason I never blocked in that part of the broom. So we got like an underbelly and maybe even like paws or tip of the tail or like parts of the tail or something like that. I think tip of the tail is okay. Paws does not look great. Underbelly looks fine. So we could have like a two-tone, something like that. We could do tips of the ears too, if we wanted to. Yeah, that gives that gives a little bit of something. Okay, we could make a snow white cat or like a calico or something. But playing with these color combinations, tweaking them a little bit, is going to give you a way to experiment and see what you're going to want to make final before you spend far too much time on it. And now that I've done something like that, I could make a new layer on top, make it a clipping mask and then like paint light on it to try that out. So like, let's just grab this sky blue and I have a totally wrong brush for this, but I'll make like a bunch of light on this side and then affect like the blending mode. Let's do like overlay now. Linear add. I wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. So you want us to do uh, drawings of characters that include um, like uh, opposite characters. Like, um, do, do you want us to also put things in the environment? What I'm looking for, final is something like this. Whatever you want to include in this, do some concept for it. That. In-game shot of action, 
or promo shot like on advertisement. So for instance, this would be a good example of what I'm looking for or this. So but the um, for the character drawings, you, you, you're emphasizing on the character design and you want us to put the character in that uh, like promo? Yeah. I mean, without a character, there's not a whole lot to get excited about. So in this one where it's the Google Doodle, there's several characters, there's an environment, you know, there's some action happening. It's not in the middle of gameplay, but all of those things need to be designed. The colors, the layout, the style. Same thing with this Animal Crossing. There's a bunch of characters, there's an environment. There's actually a graphic for the title of the game also, which would be a great addition if you guys want to do a little typography or graphic design, that's good too. But all we're really looking for final is this one image that we're gonna do a really good job on next week. Okay. Okay, or like uh, even this one, a really good example from the Sega Genesis uh, Castle of Illusion. Huh? All right. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. It's all right if we use Pisco for this uh, assignment, right? Sure. Now, I would say first draw some things, then use Pisco, because doing experimentation in pixel art is very slow and clunky. So try to draw some stuff first, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, I could even take something like one of these ducks and make pixel art out of it, but it would be really hard to freely explore starting in Piscal. That's all. Gotcha. Okay. All right, you guys, any other questions? Is that enough? Makes sense? Yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. Okay. All right. Don't skip the reference gathering step. Remember how important it was? I stressed it a lot when we did the Animal Crossing and uh, Overcooked mashup this step can save you in a big way you may find a layout that you love exactly as it is and you just want to swap out all the characters you might find colors that you love or a graphic style mash this stuff up and feel free to show us what you mashed up to because that can always be an, an interesting and inspiring way to get us excited about your particular take okay so this does not need to be final really all we final need render final render project is making Are this so is it in two weeks, the final? Um, it's next week. So the homework this week is the preliminary step. Next week is the final step. Okay. And you're going to want like the same uh, layout, um, like from, from last week, the exact same, but more, it's going to be more refined. Um, from last week, from last week, it was just, well, I mean, this, this week and next week, it's going to be more refined. Well, so this week you guys are all going to take a crack at this. And again, we're going to kind of do a popularity contest to find which ones we like the most. And then we're going to base the final week's work off of those finalists. We'll pick more than one and you could probably just do your own if you really like it but we want to kind of refine down to get a certain particular style as if this was a game production project. Because in a game production, we'd all have to agree. We'd all have to decide, yep, that's it. That's how the character is going to look and then be able to render it or draw it or 3D model it or whatever. So again, we're going to do a popularity contest to see whose take do we like the most before we let everyone do a final image. Okay. Can you give me an example of, um, like, on the internet, what you're talking about? This. I mean, of a final rendering. This. Yeah. This would be an example. So, so that's like the environment um, and the design. And you, you're going to put all of that in that. that uh, well, what we're doing this week like is just designing the potential layout for this. So you would be drawing, here's where the characters go, here's what the, the environment basically is, but it wouldn't be a final finished, really nicely polished image yet. 
but okay. this is the kind of thing we're aiming at. So this potentially would be perfectly fine with a little bit of like UI to show scoring makes it seem all the more real or that this doesn't really qualify. This is more of a character design. Neither does this or this, but this would, that's a great final finished illustration. Um, no, not really, almost, no. Any one of these would be great as a final image, yes. So imagine the process, going through the process of designing this wizard and how he's gonna hold these books and what colors and what costume he's got on and the layout of this image, that sort of thing. this one yeah so most of these examples here are are kind of what I'm looking for I'll go ahead and stick all of these in the example folder on Google Drive so that you guys can look through them as well but be sure to gather your own all right you guys anything else All right, then that's going to be it for our demonstration today. Hang out and ask questions if you need to. Otherwise, you're free to go. Good luck. Get lots of reference. And I will see you next week. Have a nice week.